arms. Ugh. The next morning, Shinka explains that she didn't see who attacked her, but she was certain it was not Dot the Notion. Kasumi returns to her house and opens a panel on the floor where she had hidden Dot the Notion for the night. While Kasumi was trying to seduce him, Dot the Notion thanks her for her help, but insists that he should return to the main house and explain what happened the previous night. Wanting Dot the Notion to herself, Kasumi refuses to let him leave and even drugs him when he tries to escape. Galen is attacked by Nastasia and Arola after they lure him away with one of the oldest and most obvious tricks in the book. <laughs> Man, far out! This is the sword I've always dreamed about and only seen in the movies! I love how it sparkles. Nothing sparkles like the real thing, that's for sure. It's a real beauty. I'm in awe! Natsu, are you sure I can keep this? Sure, keep it. I'm so happy my- uh? Oh. Hmm? Hmm? Oh. Hmm. Hey, hey, wait up! Hold on, little sword! Nastasia tries to steal the sacred sword away from Galen. However, she doesn't succeed because the sword is attached to Galen's undergarments. Their battle eventually leads them back to the main house. Ah, you stupid, insensitive fools! Don't think I'm the same scared Galen of yesterday! I must admit that despite all my hopes and dreams, my swordsmanship was a mere show until yesterday. I couldn't blame you if you likened me to a samurai nut in some crazy elaborate drag! Huh. But that's history as of today! Now that I am in the possession of a genuine sword! See I now possess the soul of a true samurai warrior! That's right! It means I've become a licensed samurai! That I've been officially reborn as a genuine warrior in my own right! You understand that? Sure, I may look the same, but... The new and improved Gallon breathes inside! My power has grown ten, no a hundred, no a thousand times stronger! It's time for the sleeping lion to awaken! Yuck, yuck, yuck! Let's kill him, Arola! Oh yeah? I feel it, the lion's blood! Rushes inside me! <laughs> Sorry, you're out of luck! You can't beat my genuine force! I'm too good! Ah! Carrie approaches Natsu, Shinka, and Shigemitsu and reveals that she is actually an Interpol agent. She is after Nastasha and Narola because they are notorious criminals who steal valuable treasures and sell them all over the world. Natsu explains that although their house looked impressive, they really didn't have anything of value. Carrie, however, suggests that Shigemitsu might know of something that would catch the attention of the two thieves. Turns out the story of Natsu's ancestor fleeing Japan and settling in Russia is the common belief. However, the real story is that Natsu's ancestor was on a mission for the Japanese government and traveled to Russia with a treasure that was meant to be used for the eventual restoration of the Tokugawa shogunate. Half the money had been paid to the Tsar in exchange for land, but the rest was unaccounted for and was said to be worth thousands of billions of yen to this day. Natsu is naturally upset about not being informed about this secret. Shigemitsu excuses it by saying it was a strict family secret and he couldn't even tell his own daughter. Unfortunately, he had foolishly told the family secret to both Nastasha and Arola. <laughs> I can see you losing your head over a little father TLC with TNA. Forgive me. Father, come on! Exactly what did you tell them? Well, believe it or not, that sacred sword is the... And so, that's how the treasure is... What?! That sacred sword played such an important role?! That means Galen is in great danger! The group hears a commotion and finds Galen facing off against Nastasha and Arola. Galen performs an obligatory shonen anime attack that would have been impressive if he didn't fail at it. During the confusion, both Carrie and Natsu are taken hostage. Nastasha tells Galen and Shinka that she would spare the two women if they obediently gave them the sacred sword. Galen at first thinks the right thing to do is to give the sword to the two villains. Shinka explains that by willingly accepting the sword, Galen had agreed to be married to Natsu, and giving the sacred sword to the thieves would not only nullify his engagement to Natsu, but it will also be a heavy blow to their family's honor. Shinka adds that if he succeeds in defeating the thieves, he would be given a samurai license. 
Galen responds by tossing the sacred sword to Nastasha, but at the last minute catches it in his mouth before cutting Carrie and Natsu free. Natsu is upset with Galen since he caught Carrie instead of her and punches him, causing him to swallow the sacred sword. The battle commences in many weird, indescribable ways after this. Finally, Shigemitsu saves the day when he shows up with the villagers in a Russian tank. The story ends with Natsu chasing Galen through the desert, insisting they need to remove the sacred sword from his stomach as soon as possible. Okay, what can I say about this anime? Well, I'm sure many of you have noticed I'm not thrilled with this story. Those of you who actually like this anime, I applaud your bravery. But as this is my opinion, or maybe just the fact I'm a woman, I would say this anime is really not worth your time. If you don't agree, feel free to make your own review. To sum this anime up in one word, it would be rushed. The story jumps from the samurai wannabe, to the arranged versus choice marriage debacle, to the hidden treasure storylines like an over-caffeinated jackrabbit. It feels as though Neshijima couldn't decide which plot point he liked better, so he decided to use them all even though he had only the budget for two episodes. The three plot points could have worked together if the series were longer and more fleshed out, but as this is a fan service anime, plot and logic are as usual non-existent. I was personally more interested in the treasure and the Sacred Sword's connection to it a lot more than Natsu's one-sided attraction to Galen, or Galen's obsessive desire to become a samurai. Also, the story doesn't emphasize that it takes place in Russia all that well. There are some hints that do suggest the story is centered in Russia. There is also an interview in the extra features where the director states that Russia was chosen as the backdrop for the story because they didn't know much about that country. As far as the story conveys, Galen could have been a Russian boy who was attending college in Japan. The dub has its own problems, however. Carrie's Texan drawl and Nastasha's Slavic accent are badly done and stereotypical, while Kasumi's voice in general comes off as irksome screech. Also, there are jokes and gags that were meant to be funny and are worth a few polite chuckles at best, but they are largely pale attempts at humor. There are even moments where the dialogue comes off as double entendre in Nuendo. Uh, <laughs> you call me punishing an evil magistrate! What evil magistrate? <laughs> Lady Natsu, really, what is the meaning of this? You gave it to him? You can't be serious, Lady Natsu, your highness! What do you mean? I gave it to him, didn't I? Are you crazy? You gave it to him? Do you realize what you've done? Huh? This, however, isn't surprising since suggestive dialogue is rather common in fan service stories. When CPM went bankrupt, many of the titles licensed by their company were lost, which means this anime no longer exists. Which is just as well. I can't say this anime is the worst one that has ever existed, because there are others that are more painful than this one, but for all its faults, there are some good points as well. For example, the animation is fairly enjoyable and suits every mood the story conveys. This story is also best seen with a group of friends because this anime is worthy of MST fodder. That way, you and your friends can laugh and poke fun at this anime together. All in all, I would give this story a 3.5, which by my point system means it's better watched on VO and YouTube. If you have any agreements, critiques, questions, or rebuttals about this review, please leave them as comments or leave me a private message. I also accept suggestions for future reviews. Next, I will be featuring a redo of an earlier review of Hell Girl Season 1. Until then, this is Venka Lee Fay, and this has been Victory Angel Reviews.